بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته This is Riyadh Razazi We're coming you to the um, stories of the prophets and today inshallah ta'ala we are with uh, episode number 40, 47 47 session number 16 talking about Musa and uh, Banu Israel all right so uh, please allow me to give a minute or two for more people to join inshallah Um, I apologize for not being able to uh, make it earlier, but I did post uh, uh, um, a notification, you know, postponing the um, the talk today until you know seven o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Um, I was running some errands and I got stuck. So, but um, I'm just giving an, a minute for more people to join. And then, inshallah ta'ala, we'll resume our uh, session number 16 on the stories of the prophets. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, again, this is episode number 40, 47. 47. All right. So uh, let me give a quick, uh, um, a quick um, recapitulation of what we talked about yesterday. Uh, we were with uh, Ben Israel after uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them from Fir'aun and after uh, Musa went to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he left uh, Ben Israel with their brother Harun uh, they deviated you know big chunk of big group of them deviated uh, started uh, worshipping this uh, calf that was made by a Samiri, this man, a Samiri, this craftsman, a Samiri, after he told them that, you know, the reason why Musa uh, took uh, longer than, than anticipated, because Musa was supposed to be going only for 30 days. He fasted for 30 days, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to fast 10 more days. Uh, and then after he completed 40 days, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, uh, uh, blessed him and offered him the Torah, you know, the Alwah, the, those uh, scrolls. Um, in the meantime, you know, Ben Israel, on the other hand, they were, they, uh, there was this man, as I mentioned, the Samiri, uh, the Samaritan, who uh, took, uh, you know, he told Ben Israel the reason why Musa got late is because he's, uh, he's upset at the fact that, you know, the gold that you have uh, collected from the Egyptians, you know, if you want Musa to come back, he will not come back until and unless we get rid of all that gold and all the jewelry that we have collected from the Egyptians. So the people, the Ben Israeli, the Israeli, and the Ben Israel, they started getting rid of all their um, uh, jewelries and gold, uh, threw them into the into the sea. So this Samiri, what he did, he collected that um, that uh, you know that the the the, the gold and he formed or crafted uh, a calf you know from gold and then he left an opening from the back uh, and that and then whenever he would hit the uh, you know that calf uh, that calf would make a, a lowing or a mooing uh, sound and then he says this is the lord of uh, the ilah of musa you know so you have to worship it and then a lot of ben israel people they started worshiping that calf Although Harun السلام, he tried to warn them, uh, he tried to uh, you know to speak to them. Yet, uh, as he said, he was weak, uh, and they almost killed him. So uh, he couldn't do much. He's not as strong. He wasn't as strong as Musa alayhi salam. Right. So when Musa came back, when Musa came back, no, that was destroyed. You will see. You know, we'll see what uh, Musa will do. Alayhi salam. He spoke to Ben Israel. Uh, and then the Banu Israel they said, well, don't blame us, blame the Samaritan, blame the Samiri who made that cough. He went to his brother Harun, uh, scolded him, was angry at him, he was disappointed. Uh, Harun says, uh, you know, I did try to 
uh, uh, warned them, but they almost killed me. I did not want to cause uh, friction. I did not want to cause that civil war between Ben Israel, so I could not really stop him. And then, uh, and then after he, uh, you know, because uh, he, he was weaker, as I mentioned, right? You know, Harun is not as as strong uh, as Musa alayhi salam. You know, he was weaker. He says, "In the people are attacking me, and they are killing me. They are attacking me. They 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 belittled me, and they almost killed me. You know." And then the, after that, then Musa alayhi salam, he went to a Samiri. He went to a Samiri, the Samaritan, and then asked him, you know, ما خطبك يا Samiri? And this is in Surah Taha. ما خطبك يا Samiri? قال بصرت بما, بما لم يبصروا به فقبضت قبضة من أثر الرسول. What happened was, brothers and sisters, this Samaritan, this guy Samiri, was a craftsman. But what happened was Jibril alayhi salam on a horse, right? Uh, uh, and then he saw this horse. Nobody saw that horse other than him, according to what the Samiri was saying. And then he took the footprint. I took a hand clip from the hoof print of the messenger's horse. So he was on a horse. And then as he was going with this horse, apparently this Malak, you know, on this horse uh, appeared to him. So he went and then he took the you know the uh, some of the footprints of that of that messenger's horse and then he used it when he was forming on when he was crafting that that um when he was crafting the 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 cough and that's what was making that noise when he was hitting that cough the cough was making that noise so he says I saw that which they did not see you know, so the Samiri, he believed his own, his own joke. He says, I saw that which they did not see. Meaning, he saw apparently, you know, the Malak, the angel on a horse. And he says, I took a hand clip from the hoof print of the, of the messenger's horse. So he saw the messenger, meaning here the, the angel. You know, meaning here the angel. So he's he apparently an angel appeared to him on a horse. So as that horse was, uh, you know, was that messenger that was riding that horse. So this Samiri or this Samaritan, he went and he picked, you know, some of the mud from the, you know, or the earth from the footprint of the horse. And then he, uh, uh, in, you know, he threw it inside that calf, you know, that he formed, you know, with the, uh, with the, you know, from gold. And then... Uh, and he told Ben Israel to start worshipping that calf, right? To start worshipping that calf. That calf. He says, that's what my nafs told me to do. <laughs> that's what my nafs told me to do. And yani his nafs, he was talking about his ego, his nafs. He says, my nafs, yani my conscience told me to do so. My consciousness of my conscience told me to take the hoof print of that horse, you know, and then to make this calf. And then ask Ben Israel to you know worship that calf, you know. Uh, then Musa السلام, was really angry at him. Musa did not punish him until he heard from him. Right? This is a lesson that we hear, you know, that we need to learn, you know, before making a judgment. Maybe you can hear things about people saying things about you, or or maybe uh, 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 spreading rumors about you. But you cannot make a judgment and listen until you hear from you know from that person yourself. So Musa alayhi salam, before punishing the Samiri, he heard from him, right? Yet, so the Samiri he tried to justify you know his actions, but of course his actions were wrong. How can you worship? How can you make? Yani, how can number one ask Ben Israel to how you know uh, you collect their gold, ask them to get rid of their gold, you take their jewelry, you make a cough off of it, you know, after all the clear signs that you have seen from the Lord from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet you go back and start worshiping a cough, you start you know worshiping a, a, a cow, yani worshiping an idol or a statue. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Taha, verse number 97. قال اذهب فإنك لك في الحياة أن لا أن لا تزول لا مساس في الحياة لا مساس وإن لك موعدا لن تخلفه. He says go. He kicked him out. He kicked him out from from his uh, uh, from the uh, from that gathering of Ben Israel from the tribe of Ben Israel because they were still in the desert. They have not reached. You know, Palestine yet. They were still just on the, uh, you know, on near Mount uh, Tor in the Sham. They were proceeding towards, uh, you know, Palestine. So then he kicked him out from uh, from the from the tribe, 
uh, and then he threw that calf Musa alayhi salam and he destroyed it he threw, you know, took that statue that idol that they made and he destroyed it alayhi salam وَانْظُرْ إِلَىٰ إِلَٰهِكَ الَّذِي ظَلْتَ عَلَيْهِ عَاكِفًا لَنُحَرِّقَنَّهُ ثُمَّ لَنَنْسِفَنَّهُ فِي الْيَمِّ نَسْفًا He says, look at this God that you have made. This is what you thought to be your God. We shall burn it and we shall destroy it and we shall, you know, throw it into the ocean. And that's what Musa a.s. did to that God before the eye, any the God, not the God, but to that idol, to that statue, to that calf that they have, you know, crafted, that, you know, Samuel has crafted. Number one, he destroyed it before everybody's eyes. You know, if you claim that this is a God, the God has to defend himself. But he, you know, it's, a, it's an idol. So he destroyed it, burned it, destroyed it, and then threw the you know threw it into the yam into the into the into the river into the into the ocean and and then he kicked out a samiri he kicked out that man from banu israel from the tribe of banu israel but that was not the end my brothers and sisters that was not the end allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ بِاتِّخَاذِكُمُ الْعِجْلِ فَتُوبُوا إِلَى بَارِئِكُمْ فَاقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ فَاقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ بَارِئِكُمْ Oh, Ben Israel, you have committed a crime, a very severe crime. After all the clear signs that you have seen from your Lord, you go back worshipping an idol. So the only way to repent to your Lord is to kill yourselves. Look how, you know, tough was that punishment, that, that judgment that he has made, the ruling that he has made. He says, for Allah to forgive you, kill yourselves. Kill yourselves. So they did actually take knives, you know, wanting to kill themselves because they wanted Allah to forgive them. The Prophet Musa السلام, told them, you have committed such a very horrible crime by worshipping an idol, by making an idol and worshipping it. So the only way for Allah Azzawajal to forgive you, repent yourself. You know, here, Muslims, when we commit a crime, may Allah forbid, when you do something wrong, you repent to your Lord. You don't have to kill yourself. No, you Repent to your Lord by seeking forgiveness from your Lord. This is our religion. This is Islam. This is our faith. If we were to go and do something wrong, may Allah forbid. As we are human, we, human beings, we do sometimes, you know, do wrong. We do sometimes fall into traps. We do sometimes, maybe at times of weakness, we, we do something wrong, maybe in evil, maybe we deviate. We're human beings. We're not infallible. No, we're not infallible. We do sometimes, you know, do wrong. If we were to do that wrong, what should we do as Muslims? We have something called tawbah, repentance. We seek forgiveness from our Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our Lord, he is the oft forgiver, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves to forgive. The oft forgiving. He is al-ghafur, al-ghaffar, al-tawwab, al-afu, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who effaces the sins. But for Bani Israel, because they have committed that crime, Musa told them, if you want Allah to forgive you, kill yourselves. So they did. They took knives, wanted to kill themselves. As they wanted to kill themselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Musa that they have been forgiven. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah. فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ He has forgiven you. Khalas, you don't need to kill yourselves. But it was tough. They were tested. They were tried. If you want Allah to forgive you, kill yourselves. فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ From Tawbah, from repentance. Allah loves to forgive. We human beings, we love to sin. Don't we? Human beings are weak. They sin. But Allah is great, he forgives, and he loves to forgive. That's why he called himself the Al-Ghafur, Al-Ghaffar, Al-Tawwab, Al-Afu. Beautiful names, alluding to how much he loves to forgive, subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
for Bani Israel. But you will see, Musa, as I mentioned, he really went through so much. Right? Musa went through so much. Just so much pain and trial from Bani Israel. More than the trial he had with Fir'aun. More when he was, you know, when he left, you know, Egypt going towards Medium in the desert. More, alayhi salam. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ بَارِئِكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ so after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them, they resumed their trip towards Palestine. So they went, they reached Alden, Jordan, and then they passed by a very close mount called Jabal Nibu, Nimu. It, that mount still exists until today, which is a, a very high mount that uh, ha, that offers seas, Al Majd Al Aqsa, Palestine. Allahu Akbar. There is this mount near Jordan. You know, it's very high, Nemo, which is in the verge of Palestine. From it, you can it oversees Beit Al Maqdis, Quds, Al Majd Al Aqsa. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, uh, the uh, the Sahaba they asked Prophet Muhammad, they said, Ya Rasulullah, which is the very first mosque that was built? The very first, you know, house of worship that was built on earth. The Prophet Muhammad said, Listen to this. I'm giving you. No, I said, remember, I said he, he destroyed it. He destroyed it, burnt it, destroyed it and threw it into the, into the ocean. So that statue, that calf, of course, no longer exists. Musa alayhi salam, remember what I said just you know, a few minutes ago? He destroyed it before their eyes. He broke it down, destroyed it, burned it, and then threw it into the into the into the into the ocean. Alright? So uh okay, come back here. Come back here. The Prophet Muhammad was asked about the very first mosque that was built on earth. The very first mosque. The Prophet Muhammad says Al Kaaba. The very first house of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad said Al Kaaba. And then next. What's next? The Prophet Muhammad says, Al Masjid Al Aqsa, Quds, Quds, Jerusalem, right? In Quds there. And then he was asked, How long between the two? How long between the two? You know, between the building of the Kaaba and the building of Masjid Al Aqsa, hadith which is in Bukhari, by the way, so it's very authentic. How long was between Al Kaaba and between Al Quds? The Prophet says, 40 years. 40, 40 which means when the Kaaba was built 40 years later Masjid Al-Aqsa in Palestine was built so the very first Masjid that was built is the Kaaba of course the very first house of Allah Azzawajal is the Kaaba and after the Kaaba it's not uh, Masjid Al-Madani in Medina no after that is Al-Quds Al-Quds Al-Haram. And after Quds, how long between them, between Al-Quds and between the Kaaba? You know, the first house is uh, Mecca, al uh, Kaaba, and then after that is Al-Quds. How long between them? The Prophet says 40 years between the two. 40 years. In the Masjid Al-Aqsa, just so you know, you know, this is a small pause here, brothers and sisters. You know, that Masjid Al-Aqsa had the greatest gathering of all the Prophets. Huh? Yes. When the Prophet was ascended into the heavens, before when he traveled from Mecca to Al-Quds first, he had a stop in Al-Quds, right? He had a stop in Al-Quds, and after the quds he went up into the heavens when he when Allah Azza wa Jal offered the salah. Right? So but Prophet had a stop in Al-Quds. In there he met all the prophets. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathered all the prophets. From Adam alayhi salam until Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam. He gathered all of them in Al-Quds. And in there, Prophet Muhammad, your Prophet and my Prophet, he led them into prayers. Allah. Yes. Yes. Your Prophet and my Prophet. Although Adam was there, Ibrahim was there, Musa was there, Isa was there, Nuh was there, Yusuf was there. 
all the other prophets yet prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was the one who in fact came and led the salah all the other prophets they prayed behind prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in al masjid al aqsa in al masjid al aqsa in quds may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring it back bring it back inshallah ta'ala al quds this is what we call the biggest gathering in history of mankind the biggest gathering in the history of mankind all the prophets 124000 prophets so more or less that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent allah gathered them all in bait al aqsa right and prophet muhammad was you know was to lead the prayer sallallahu alaihi wasallam your prophet and my prophet you should all be proud of the fact that you're a muslim that you are a follower of prophet muhammad all of us we should be proud that we are of of the followers of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they resumed their trip their journey to bait al maqdis when they were 10 kilometers or so you know in the verge in the outskirts the boundary boundaries of quds they stopped they stopped they started you know playing games again they did not want to go on they said no we're not going we're staying here we're not going yet we're not ready to go they were only 10 kilometers before because initially the aim was to go to Beit al maqdis that's how they left you know uh egypt allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he sent musa to con to confront you know Fir'aun for for you know for what reason to stop enslaving Bani Israel and to take Bani Israel out from Egypt to Palestine right so as they were going to Palestine when they were only a few kilometers away from Palestine they stopped they were almost there subhanallah they were almost there then Bani Israel said oh no 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 we're not ready to enter Palestine yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it prohibited upon them for 40 years they started wandering lost in the desert one more time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-ma'idah verse number 26 allah made it prohibited haram upon them for 40 years they can't go yeah maqdis is there but they got lost they it's called uh, you know it's called the the one dream the years of wonder they were wandering where in the desert they lived in the desert for 40 years and in that 40 years musa alayhi salam has to endure a lot again from banu israel ah uh, in that 40 years a lot will happen a lot of hardship because they're wandering now they're just in the desert lost so what happened many tests many trials so musa alayhi salam what did he do first and foremost he split them into 12 sort of qabilas 12 majmu'a 12 you know groups remember there were over 600,000 over 600,000 people so he split them into 12 groups each group was led by a leader as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَبَعَثْنَا مِنْهُمْ وَثْنَيْ عَشْرَ نَقِيبًا إثنى عشر نقيبة. We sent over them 12 chiefs. So 12 groups, 12, you know, each group is led by a leader or by chief. So this is the first thing that Musa did. And then he started teaching them or teaching the leaders, the Torah, for the leaders to teach Banu Israel right in the torah basically you know the commandments the commandments of allah Azza wa Jal, don't uh, cheat don't steal don't commit adultery don't drink alcohol don't uh, uh, don't dishonor your parents these are the commandments of the torah right so he will start teaching them the torah within those those years banu israel are they gonna follow the torah no <laughs> they're not gonna follow the Torah so you know what they said they said well oh Musa you know what 
um, um, as now we're reading the Torah, uh, don't just uh, we're gonna choose whatever we want to follow, and whatever we don't like, we're not going to follow. Huh? Again, despite all they have seen, despite all the clear evidence, despite all the miracles, despite the fact that they were supposed to kill themselves, and Allah Azza wa Jal forgave them. Despite all that, now the Prophet is, you know, uh, uh, teaching them the Torah and, and things that they have to, you know, uh, obey within the Torah, which are the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They came back saying, uh, we're going to go with whatever we like in the Torah and whatever we don't like, we're not going to follow. Hmm. <laughs> Sometimes, you, you know, if we look at the Muslims, there's some Muslims who, you know, somewhat do the same thing. You know, we go for a fatwa. If you don't like this fatwa, you go to another sheikh asking for another fatwa. Uh, there's some liberals. There are some ilmaniyin, you know, seculars who, uh, in fact, they say, no, no, this Quran has to be changed. It does not, you know, meet our needs today. It's 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 back uh, worded. Uh, it's not actually does not go in accordance with with the with the time. This is old. Uh, we will only choose uh, a little bit of it. You know, things that are easy on the nafs. Uh, five daily prayers is too much. Maybe we don't have to. Maybe one prayer a day. Uh, the fasting of Ramadan. Uh, I don't know about that. The the, the, the charity. Uh, women wearing hijab. No, that's not good. We don't like that. Women, they don't have to wear hijab. Because we are This is uh, we are in, 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 in year two, 2020 now. We, there are so many backward things from the Quran. We don't need to follow this. You know, we don't. We will only follow what goes with our whims and desires. Some people are doing the same thing today because Ben Israel they said the same thing to Musa. Oh, Musa, we're gonna look into the Torah. We're only going to choose that which goes with our desires. We will choose some and leave others. <laughs> In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allahu Akbar, verse number 85, Musa says, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Do you believe in some of what she, which is in the book and then you disbelieve in others? You believe in, in some of what's in the Torah and you disbelieve in others? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one more time was to punish them. One more time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to punish them. What kind of punishment? Look at this, sisters and brothers. Are you ready to listen to this? Sisters and brothers, those of you on Facebook and those of you on Instagram, are you ready to listen to what kind of punishment Allah Azza wa Jal is about to afflict upon them? Are you ready to listen to this? Those of you on Facebook, those of you on Instagram, what kind of punishment Allah Azza wa Jal is about to afflict upon them? This is huge. This is big. This is big. Because they said we will only believe in some and don't believe in others. So they they deserved another punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal. What is that punishment? You guys are ready for it? You want to listen to it? Yes? Yashmin and Sana, yes? Those of you on Facebook, are you there? Shazia, yes? All of a sudden, brothers and sisters, all of a sudden before their eyes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised Mount Sinai. A huge mount in Jordan, Sinai, near Palestine. Raised that mount, Sinai, over them, over them. And the mount started coming. They thought that the mount will be, yani, will fall on them. They thought that the mount will fall over their heads. وَإِذْ نَتَقْنَا الْجَبَلَ فَوْقَهُمْ كَأَنَّهُ ظُلَّهُ وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُ وَاقِعٌ, واقع بِهِمْ خُذُوا مَا آتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةِ وَاذْكُرُوا مَا فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 171, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we raise the mount, over them as they thought that the mount will fall upon them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says hold on Musa now he's telling them hold on firmly to the to the Torah don't just believe in some and take on and don't believe in others La, 
hold on strongly to the Torah, otherwise the mount will fall upon them. They said, we will, we will, we will. One more time, another miracle before their eyes. Another miracle before their eyes. The mount is falling, is, is, is on top. The mount is moving, moving, moving until it reached just before them, and before their heads. And the mount was to fall upon them and not to destroy them unless they were to take the Torah altogether and hold on to it. Take it! As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Take it! So they said, We shall believe, we shall believe. خلاص, خلاص, خلاص. We will. Is that the end? No, that wasn't the end. Uh, guys, you saw so many miracles. You saw so many miracles. What else do you need? Isn't this enough? You saw more miracles than any other prophet before you. Prophet Hud, Prophet Nuh, Prophet uh, Saleh. Saleh came with one, 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 one uh, uh, miracle, the miracle of the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 that, that camel, you know, Hud, what miracle? Uh, Nuh, what miracle? You know, uh, Yusuf, what miracle? What miracle? You know, uh, uh, Shu'aib, what miracle? So many miracles, this Ben Israel, one after another, one after another. The mount is being raised and it was about to fall upon them. Are they going to believe now? Are they going to straighten up now? Oh, unfortunately not. What's going to happen? What would Musa do? Well, Musa would think of a way. Musa, alayhi salam, ya Rasul Qasih. Rasul Qasih. That's it. Of course, Rasul Qasih. So what's going to happen now, brothers and sisters? Musa will think of something to do. What is that thing that Musa will do? What will happen to Bani Israel? What's going to happen next? We will talk about that tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Tomorrow, Sunday, inshallah, we will talk about what's next with Bani Israel. What's going to happen? Because again, one more time, they they hesitated one more time they <laughs> they 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 slacked one more time they deviated so what's going to happen we'll talk more inshallah ta'ala tomorrow bi idnillah azakum allah khair may allah bless you all thank you for joining thank you for participating may allah bless you all azakum allah khair Sisters and brothers, Facebook, Instagram, Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. It's actually uh, Maghrib time here, right? It's Maghrib time here in, in, in Toronto. I'm going to pray Maghrib, inshallah. So uh, I will see you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, you guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala. Salamu alaikum.